So hi, I'm Isaac for Pop Scoop, and we're at Norwich Art Centre, and I'm here with the super talented singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist, Emma Stevens. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? You did a great good. set downstairs. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I've had fun. So. Yeah, and you've been supporting Jen Bostick for this tour. That's right, yeah. Um, but you've been gigging pretty steadily for, I mean, it's been a crazy yeah, year for you, hasn't it? Has. It has, it's been amazing. Um, from playing tiny little venues to playing 40,000, you know, capacity festivals, BBC introducing, headlining, yeah. you know, at Hyde Park, that was, that was insane. So it's been a huge roller coaster ride this year, but um, it's been amazing. Yeah, and you've had your you've had three of your four EPs come out this year. You have a, yeah, that's you, right. Quite um, a quick succession. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, there seemed to be more um, of a want for the album to come out, so I just Did ended up releasing out? the EPs quicker and quicker. Ah, okay. In the end, the fourth EP was released um, literally maybe four weeks after the third EP. Well, I thought so, I saw the dates. And, and then the yeah, album yeah. came out very, very quickly after that, so it did mean that I had to speed up with my writing, but... Gosh, I mean, that's the dream, isn't it? To have yeah. people that want to have, you know, the music, so... No, of course. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about how how those four EPs work together? I mean, you're yeah, saying a bit sure. on stage, too. Um, well, I said I lost my mum um, to cancer in March last yeah. year, and it's been um, a really, really hard thing to go through. Um, but she left me with this incredible blessing of doing this wonderful artwork for me. Um, so it's a painting... But you can divide it up into four pieces, and it basically has four individual paintings as well, which yeah. have been my EPs. Um, and then so after I released the fourth EP, the picture was kind of revealed, um, yeah, which is the album great. artwork. So it's been really special to have that with me, and it's kind of definitely helped me through the grieving process and um, made me feel as though I've got my mum with me on the journey as well. So it's been yeah, pretty so special. <laughs> it's nice to have, you know, to have have her work there with yeah. you and Absolutely. was that something that was planned uh, you know a lot, long time ago that she would do your artwork not for? really no. no I mean I always she she was always the one that said to me Emma you need to be doing this yourself I spent so long writing for other people and playing guitar for other people or piano Talk for other people and that, yeah. yeah and and she just said look just have faith have confidence in yourself and it really wasn't until I realized how short life can be that I thought, do you know what, I am going to throw myself into this and I'm going to make her bloody proud. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, when, I, when we found out the news, I, in a way, it kind of makes me feel good to know that she knew I was going to go for it and do it. Um, yeah. So, she, yeah, she left knowing that, which is, which is good, really, so... I mean, I'm sorry to make you talk about it. No, no, no. It's all part and parcel, I guess, in the lovely yeah. way that you have that you have kind of taken all of I that. Think, and yeah, in a way, it's important to talk about it, um, and it's been like very cathartic for me to write about it. I've written um, two songs that have been about losing people and about dealing with grief, and I think that that's. Um, in some flower, you belong yeah, to yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to get through live, and it's an emotional thing, but. I'm not the only person that's lost someone, and I think um, it's a wonderful way of being able to, people being able to relate to you, you know, and the more honest and open you can be about your feelings, I think, the more friends you make, the more, you know, supporters you get, really, yeah. so. Well, yeah, because yeah. we all go through it, mm. things, and it's mm. to have your music there, and to know that somebody who's yeah. performing live has been through the same things, mm. and mm. Yeah. it's very important. And I, I know this is a selfish thing, but it, it really helps me when, um, people will tell me a story or they'll they'll be able to kind of relate to it, you know, so mm -hmm. it makes me feel like I'm not the only person in the world, so, <laughs> yeah. And um, what was the first spark, or, or sparkle, of course, is probably what we should say with you. <laughs> I like and what you first, did that. <laughs> <laughs> the first sparkle that got you going in music, I mean, do, do you remember if there was a sort of I really do, I used then? to just absolutely adore making music be it on pots and pans, driving my parents crazy, or playing my mum's nylon string guitar until it went completely out of tune, you know. I, I always loved creating music, and I think when my parents noticed that, they kind of tried to put me through a classical route, so they, I learnt cello and piano classically on guitar, uh, on, um, down the classical route, mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of picked up the nylon string guitar, and then figured that I actually preferred writing to learning and doing all of that stuff so um and cello is not the easiest instrument to write with so yes. I kind of naturally um kind of went down the guitar piano route for my writing and then 
fell in love with country music. So I picked up the banjo, the mandolin, ukulele, and yeah, the rest mm -hmm. is history, really. Yeah, because you, I mean, a lot of people, you know, it's, it's a sort of folk pop for mm, style, mm, but mm. I think, I mean, I see more, I, I see... There are a few little countries in yeah, yeah, there's the triangle, <laughs> yeah, and you know, it sounds, I mean, some of it sounds like Jewel, and, and, oh, and, great, and thank you. you know, you do have that, I think people say folk, but it sounds a bit more country to Yeah, that yeah, way, that thank you. Well, you know, the happiness and the sadness mm. is there in that kind of music. Mm. And, mm. Music. and I love the storytelling behind country music. One of my favourite bands um, of all time are the Dixie Chicks. And I watched, I know they're a love and hate band, but um, I got their DVD a few years ago for Christmas. And the way they were just walking around stage with their banjos, they're just so cool, you know, mm. and they look great. And the songs they sang about were so incredible. The, the writing behind it was amazing and the musicality. and. I just love that Nashville scene. I just love it. I think yeah. it's so they're so talented out there. It's was that your inspiration a long time ago as well? I think. Yeah, I think maybe about seven years ago I sort of got into them. So yeah, just when else? they were getting told off in America for doing all <laughs> things. Well, it's kind of part and parcel. Yeah. That, that you've got people like Kate Nash are that way too, mm, where, you, where you, mm. have, you, know, you have somebody who's made yeah. themselves slightly controversial by having opinions about yeah. things, but I think yeah. you, you need to have Absolutely, opinions, yeah. So yeah. You're in a position to, to do that. So, mm. And who other, what other artists you know, would you say were your Ooh. main inspirations um, throughout your... Well, I'm a surfer, and so I love, and I play ukulele, so I love the kind of like laid back feel of Jack Johnson and Jason Mraz. Um, I love those guys so much. Um, as far as guitar goes, John Mayer is way up there on my list of artists that I really love. Um, it's funny how they're all male, isn't it? <laughs> well, we started <laughs> with females here, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd say those are kind of my most listened to at the moment. Yeah. And who would you most like to collaborate with if you, I mean, if you could choose anyone? I'd be too terrified to collaborate with John Mayer because he's insanely muso. <laughs> and probably, yeah. I mean, I'd love to collaborate with him, but I'd be terrified and probably wouldn't shine. Um, <laughs> I think one of my favourite artists, um, a British female artist, is Imogen Heap. I love her. I think she's amazing. Um, I think she's totally out there, but it'd be great to see what I could do with her. You know. Yeah, and duets. I don't think they're done enough nowadays. Yeah, I know, really. so I know. I think, it's such I mean, a even shame. if you were, you know, to have a Jack Johnson and you were Ed Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. It would, that it would be, be great, great. To, have, to have that combo of singer-songwriters who... I love that. So, if anyone's so, watching so yes, this, if if anyone's please, watching. <laughs> I would really like to collaborate with you. <laughs> Good, we've got that. Definitely have that on camera. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so we talked a bit about you know, your four EPs mm. that have come through to Enchanted now, the album, mm. and that's out. Mm. And um, your lead single you played tonight, yeah. um, Riptide. Yeah. And a great video to that too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was um, that was really interesting because we shot the video. We we wanted because it's quite a, a sort of it's one of my darker songs. We wanted to have a moody day at the sea, um, at the seaside. And unfortunately, so we chose October thinking it would be quite overcast. And unfortunately, it ended up being probably, supposed to be the sun sunniest there. day of the year. <laughs> um, so it kind of had a little bit of a different turn. But yeah, it was fun, and I've been really lucky with Riptide um, because iTunes really got behind it and it was a free single of the week. It was free single of the yeah. week for India, Russia and UK, which as an unsigned and completely independent artist is unprecedented really. And how so. did that come about? Is that um, some they, phone calls that happened? Well yeah, I mean yeah. I've got a great team of people. Be, I know that I'm DIY and unsigned, but you know, I have got a great team of people, I've got a wonderful manager, a wonderful digital PR and company and, and yeah. it all kinda of came together and but they have iTunes have supported me from day one really and they've Put, they've tipped me as best of 2013, and I've been very lucky. So. Well, we understand. That. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to count my blessings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how was that to, to you know to know that a lot of people would download it too just because it we, was we, free that they hear somebody that they they wouldn't necessarily have chosen. It's just it's, it's so much more exposure. It's amazing. Way. We found out that there was I think 250 thousand downloads of Riptide. Uh, and I just, it, <laughs> I wish that it wasn't free and that that charted. <laughs> well, yes, yes, you sort of tore no. it there, right? <laughs> it's, um, it's just been incredible, really. Um, I've had lovely reactions um, from people, not just in those places, but across the world, sending me messages. And to feel, to see that my music has reached that far is incredibly humbling. Like, I, I can't explain it. It's this amazing feeling. Yeah. Little old me in Guildford. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. I mean, how do you see that contrast between you performing live to to, mm. to a lot of people and then just you at home doing the songwriting and? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, we we wrote Riptide pretty much in a day. Um, I kind of didn't think to myself, oh, one day I might be playing this to 40,000 people. I just thought, I want to write a song from here that's, that I like, that I enjoy singing, that I enjoy, I'd like to deliver live. Yeah. Um, turns out it's one of the hardest ones to play live without my band, <laughs> like I explained today, but um, it's still good fun. Yeah. You did, did, did more of a strip back um, mm. now, um, yeah. but do you perform with the full band too? Whenever I can. Yeah. Um, usually the core members of the uh, four piece um, and me, so five. And um, when I'm lucky enough to be up north, I've got a lovely cellist that joins me. Um, it's great to be able to mix it up. Um, I've usually work with Sam Whiting, who's my guitarist, and he comes on tour with me, and he's just amazing. He's like the best person to hang out with ever. He's over there watching me. <laughs> so, Do you have to say positive things? Yeah, I'm yeah. saying all good things right now. But <laughs> No, he's great. Um, and he's also featured on a few of the tracks on my album as well, so okay. he's a great guitarist. But yeah, because the production is so lush on on, oh. on there that you know it is quite a contrast to. That's you know, thanks to Pete on Woodruff. The album. <laughs> I um, work with this incredible producer called Pete Woodruff, who's known for his work with Def Leppard. I mean, he's just worked with everyone, and he's um, kind of the one producer that I really work with, and everything's just clicked, and we just get on with it, and it's just an amazing working relationship. So I'm so lucky to have stumbled upon him. <laughs> Great. Yeah, he's Great. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and you've announced your headline tour for next year, oh right? You've just announced that. I'm so starting in the spring. So excited! Yep, it's going to be March, April. Um, I think I'm doing 16 dates all across the UK. I'm hoping to get over to Ireland as well. Um, I don't want to say too much yet, but um, okay. that's definitely on the horizon. Yeah. Um, and I just can't wait to put on my own show and to do my own thing. I've been lucky enough to tour with wonderful artists like Passenger and Stu Larson and Sam Gray and, and seeing how they perform and they do their headline set. You learn so much. Mm, right, absolutely. But. And I just can't wait to get out there and actually do it myself. And it's going to be great. full set. Yay! As many full songs set. as you. Exactly. Yeah, and full band. Full band, yeah. yeah. Wow. Absolutely. That's very exciting. So everyone can look out for that. Yes! Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you happy to do a few quick fire fun questions as well for the fans? We can so try. We can set. try. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound too hot. I'm not guaranteed the answers. Okay, 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 okay. Definitely, okay. let's do it. Yeah, um, I'm excited. What's your favorite color? Purple. Purple. It's quick. Um, your favorite animal? Do you have tigers? One? I love tigers. Tigers. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. But I love all animals, but tigers are a special. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favorite food or meal? Oh my goodness, I don't know, I don't know. I like Thai food. Alright. Um, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Like, maybe a roast dinner, but without the meat. So like, roast vegetables and roast potatoes and gravy. Yeah, that's good. good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and favourite <clears throat> film of all time? Oh gosh, I'm going to get absolutely scrutinised for this. That's why we asked no! it. That's why we asked it. <laughs> Pearl Harbour. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting disapproving looks everywhere. <laughs> Somebody has I to. I love it. I love it. It's so romantic, and I'm yeah. Okay. It's soppy. No. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I do like the Die Hard collection as well. So that's a good contrast. That's given me some yeah. points. Over. And it's soppy, but there's a lot of violence in Pearl Harbor mm. too. So mm. I think you've, you've, yeah, you've covered okay, it. <laughs> um, first album you ever bought with your own money? Oh wow. Um, if you can remember. I think I, I remember one of the first singles I ever bought, which was Slim Shady, my name is. <laughs> See, it's always really interesting to, you know, you play but, a certain um, style and then we hear... The we hear what album? <laughs> I don't know. For a single, I mean, that's quite, yeah. it's quite interesting in itself. It's awful, isn't it? Do you still li listen to that? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> um, what song do you have on constant repeat now, nowadays? Oh, wow. Um, I've been really loving just Jason Mraz's albums. We listen to them all the time on the way up and down the country. Um, and Sarah Borelli's as well. I'm really into her. So, uh, kind of that. And also, um, just going back to being on tour with Sam Gray, there's a song that we listen to all the time called Hard City by Sam Gray. So, if Sam's watching this, I love that song. Okay, and we've got that on camera too. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the last book you finished? Oh my goodness. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of one at the moment, which I absolutely love, um, which I can't. I've, 
the pilgrimage of uh, I can't remember the name, but it's really good. <laughs> it's and a very good book. I'm halfway Go through on. it at the moment, and I'm desperate to finish it. But okay. touring life stops that from happening. Yeah, you can't read in the car. Or Harold Fry, yeah. the pilgrimage of Harold Fry. All right, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, coffee or tea? Coffee. Definitely coffee person. Coffee in the morning, tea past twelve. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite item of clothing right now? Do you have one? Um, potentially my sparkly skirt. I love anything sparkly. Um, otherwise... Nothing specific. Nothing specific, okay. no. Um, what was the first poster you had on your wall as a teen? Another one, shamedly, it's probably Blink-182. <laughs> Alright, so you had some and Blink-182. And, and Friends, and the Friends poster. Massively into Friends. <laughs> still, still. On. Why aren't I in a punk girl punk rock band? It does. There, there is. There yeah. is an <laughs> Not the friends. But, um, and what's your essential can't live without gadget? Um, it's going to sound awful if I say my phone. My um, ukulele. That's a, yeah, it's a gadget. Yeah, <laughs> I think definitely ukulele is a gadget. All right. Um, <laughs> and uh, favorite journey? Do you have one? Journey is in. As in, um, a place that I've traveling visited. to. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite journeys. Well, one of my favorite journeys I've ever done was when I was doing, I was playing session guitar for a band that took me to Europe, and uh, we drove from Milan. I was really lucky because I shotgunned the front for this drive, and in the back of the van you can see nothing. So they put up with me going, "Wow! Oh my goodness! Wow! Wow! Wow!" wow. <laughs> but it was the drive from Milan up through into Switzerland, and it was oh, beautiful through the mountains awesome. and everything was just stunning. So yeah, that was pretty pretty cool. That sounds lovely. <laughs> um, and ultimate hero, do you have one? Ah, oh, ultimate hero. Can be musical. Can be. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Oh, this is so you tricky! Sam, <laughs> Sam, who's my ultimate hero? Batman? No, completely not Batman. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. And, and, and a life motto, or a favourite saying of yours, as a final one. Be you. Be you? Be Good. you. That's nice to end on, I think. <laughs> It's been great chatting to Thank you, you so Emma, much. And, and we look forward to um, tour next year yeah, and more singles and Definitely. Full, full launch of the album. Absolutely. All right. Lovely to chat with Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.